Welcome to the fourth part of the NVMet Getting Started tutorial series. In this part, we would like to explain the database manager that enables you to view, edit, and add datasets. When opening the database manager via the NVMet headquarter, you can see eight different database tables for the different groups of elements. We will now go through all of them and explain their structure with some examples. Before you start editing your databases, make sure you have selected the right project. As explained in the last video, NVMet uses two levels of databases, the system database and the user or project database. If you have defined that your project uses a project database, you are able to edit your project database. If your project uses no project database, you are able to edit your user database. Let's dive into materials first, which are the basic elements for walls and single walls. You can create a new material in your project database by right-clicking on the Project Materials section. You can now define the database ID by left-clicking on the blue default value. Note that your ID must have six characters. You can also select a name and a new color for your material. Afterwards, you can edit the other attributes of this element. By clicking on the three dots on the right, some further information about the individual parameters, like their unit or short description, are given. After we have created our new material, we can now use it to define a new type of wall and roof construction. Simply add a new project wall to your database. Again, you can now define the basic attributes on the right-hand side. By double-clicking on the wall item, a new window opens up, where you can specify the components of the wall. A wall in NVMet always consists of three elements. On the left-hand side, the structure of your wall is digitized. On the right-hand side, all available materials are presented. You can assign them to any part of the wall by dragging and dropping. If you would like your wall to consist of only one or two elements instead of three, you can assign the same material two or three times. Let's build a wall out of our new project material and two system materials. You can also edit the width of each element and view the total width of the new defined wall. If you double click on system database elements, you can also see their components and structure. Next, we go to soils. Soils are the basic elements for profiles, which describe the elements which you will use in your model area to define the ground. You can create a new soil in the same way you created a new material. If you now create a new project profile and double click on it, you can see that the profile consists of up to 19 different soils. Just like with walls, you can assign the soils to the profile by dragging and dropping. Single walls are walls which consist of only one element and describe thin structures like sun sails, for example. After creating a new single wall, you can assign a material for this wall by double-clicking the element. The Simple Plants tab includes plants with a simple vertical structure like crops or grass. In the Greening tab, you can define a new wall or roof greening. Like with walls and profiles, you can specify the components of the structure by dragging and dropping. Last but not least, the Sources tab includes sources of pollution, like automotive lanes for example. After creating a new element here, you can specify the pollution of different molecules at each hour of the day. The traffic tools will help you keep the overview. As always, do not forget to save your database after you finish editing. That's it for the fourth part, and in the following video of this series, we will explain how to digitize with spaces. Thank you for watching, and if you like, you can visit our website or check out our other tutorials here on YouTube.